Hello everyone, I am the Mad Hitted Kirby, and welcome to my channel, The Commander Tavern. The Commander Tavern is a channel dedicated to my favorite Magic the Gathering format. The brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews and other deck techs. This final episode of the second season of the brewery is a Lunar New Year special, so I will be discussing a legendary creature thematic to the Year of the Rat, which is coincidentally my year, Maronar. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my TCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description. It'll really help out the channel. Other ways you can help support the channel is with my Patreon. Patrons get early access to scheduled videos on YouTube and higher tier patrons get access to the VIP section of my Discord server as well. You can find a link to that down in the description too. In fact, patrons got a chance to see this video earlier. Alright, let's get back to the episode. Maronara is a 2-3 rat rogue for 3 generic and 2 black. He has a lord ability giving fear to all rats. Not just rats you control, but all rats. At least if you're in a mirror match, you can block opposing rats. He can also create a rat token for each rat you control when you tap him and sacrifice a rat. This is a great ability similar to ones found on Krenko Mob Boss and the like. These types of abilities have the potential to fill the board with creatures fairly quickly, so we're definitely going to take advantage of it. The deck also runs rats to disrupt opponents' hands. Locust Miser and Nat Miser are great early game drops when opponents still have large hands. Then when they've all lived their usefulness later on in the game, they can be sacrificed to Maronar in order to make more rats. Burglar Rat and Rotting Rats also make opponents discard cards but not in a roundabout way like the Misers do. However, it's when they enter the battlefield. Rotting Rats also has Unearth which is great to reuse the ability again. Not only that, but that makes it even better sacrifice fodder to Maronar. Stronghold Rats and Nizumi Bone Raider are repetitive ways of making opponents discard cards. Stronghold Rats has us discard cards also, but that's not really a big deal in this deck. Nozumi Bone Reader requires 1 black mana and sacrificing a creature, which is fine since this deck is basically an Aristo Rats deck. On the topic of sacrificial rats, Piper of the Swarm creates rats as well as sacrificing them to steal opponents' creatures. On its own, it might be slow, but not in a deck where the commander makes a ton of rats. The ability is also recurable thanks to Thorn by Staff. Apart from Skull Clamp, which I'm going to discuss later, Thorn by Staff is possibly the best equipment in the deck. When equipped to Piper of the Swarm, it untaps when activating its ability since it requires rats to be sacrificed. Same goes for Maronara himself. Activating his ability requires sacrificing a rat. When you do, the staff's ability triggers and enters the stack. After Maronara abilities resolves, the staff resolves untapping him, and in order to have even more rats, naming rat as Conspiracy enters the battlefield makes every card in our deck, wherever it may be, into a rat. This makes Maronar create a 1-1 rat token for every creature we control, not just rats. We can also take advantage of all the rats being created with cards like Ayara First of Lock Twain and Gruesome Fate. Ayara drains our opponents for 1 life whenever a black creature enters the battlefield. So if we had 10 rat tokens enter the battlefield, our opponents just lost 10 life each and we gained 10 life. As a bonus, she has a built-in sacrifice outlet where we can draw a card if we tap her and sacrifice another black creature. Again, an ability that can be abused with Thorn by Staff. Gruesome Fate is not only a flavorful card here, but useful too. If we had a ton of creatures, we can easily take out opponents that are on the verge of death without even attacking them. Or maybe we just cast it after combat in order to secure the kill. It might seem uphill killing off an entire table with a bunch of 1-1s, but that brings me to my next point. Making a ton of 1-1 rats might be dangerous, but that won't guarantee us killing off the entire table anytime soon. Nor will it help us out against the stompy decks. We might as well take advantage of all these rats and add even more boons. Metallic Mimic can be a rat, which is great for our commander. Yet, what makes it amazing in the deck is that it has rats enter the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. A single plus one plus one counter might not seem like much, but when you're doubling the amount of rats with each activation, that counter essentially quadruples the power you're putting onto the table. All for a two-costed creature. Machaeus the Unhallowed also gives our rats plus one plus one as well as our other non-human creatures. However, he's great for getting rats back after being sacrificed since they get undying. Technically, all of our non-human creatures get undying too, which is great for when we have to wipe the board. But more on that later. Even then, these creatures pale in comparison to Coat of Arms. Just be careful when facing other tribal decks because its effect is not limited to just your creatures. He gives all creatures plus one plus one for every other creature that shares its type. So if we have seven rats in play, each one gets plus six plus six. All for just five mana, which is pretty crazy. Crashing Drawbridge is great since it can tap to give haste to all of our creatures. Creating a bunch of rats isn't scary unless it's done at the end of the turn before ours. 
but if we do create them all during our turn, being able to tag that same turn with a ton of nasty rats is something scary indeed. Whip of Erebos also provides a global boon by giving all of our creatures lifelink. This is key in the deck since, as we'll see soon, the deck can be quite taxing on our own life totals. Not only does the whip give our creatures lifelink, but it can also be used to unearth a creature from our graveyard in a pinch. Since this is an Aristo Rats deck, let's take even more advantage of our creatures dying, one of those being viable win cons. Blood Artist and Zulaport Cutthroat drain opponents for one life whenever creatures die. Blood Artist triggers whenever any creature dies, but it can only target one opponent. Zulaport Cutthroat can hit all opponents, but it only targets when one of our own creatures die. Other ways to take advantage of sacrificing our own creatures is by having our opponents sacrifice creatures whenever one of our creatures dies, thanks to Dictate of Erebos and Grave Pact. Stacks effects bypass almost all forms of protection, except for only a handful of cards out of the almost 20,000 cards legal in Commander. This also helps clear the way out for our Rat Swarm to swing in for considerable amounts of life, as well as getting rid of utility creatures. Sir Conrad the Grim is another way to take advantage of creatures dying. Consistently sacrificing handfuls of creatures with him on the battlefield is a great way to really lower opponents' life totals. He can also do so if opponents discard cards, which is great with the rats mentioned in the beginning of the video. Also mentioned in the beginning of the video was Skull Clamp. Most of the time our rats might have one toughness. Equipping Skull Clamp kills them without any effort and we get to draw two cards when we do. If we do have our rats pumped, then at least it'll draw us two cards when we sacrifice them some other way. Other ways of drawing cards off of creatures dying is with Grim Harispex, Harvester of Souls, and Midnight Reaper. Each of these creatures draws a card whenever one of our non-token creatures dies. Unfortunately, most of the creatures we're sacrificing are going to be tokens. However, we can still sacrifice non-token creatures in order to draw cards. Fortunately, Dark Prophecy, Liliana Dreadhorde General, and Erebos Bleak Hearted don't care if the creature that died was non-token or not. We still get to draw the card. You just have to be careful when the enchantment because we lose one life each time. As for Liliana, her other abilities are great too. We can create a zombie token to have as sacrifice fodder or trump blocking. We can make everyone sacrifice two creatures, which is no big deal for us. But activating her ultimate isn't the goal of including her in the deck. However, if you're able to do so, go for it. With Erebos, we just have to pay two life each time one of our creatures dies. As a plus, he has a built-in sacrifice outlet that can kill weenies as well as bigger creatures if we have the mana and creatures to invest to it. We can also pay 2 mana and 2 life to straight up draw a card whenever we want with Erebos God of Death. No strings attached, we don't have to wait for any of our creatures to die to draw cards with this version of Erebos. Additionally, Erebos 1 and 2 are indestructible, which is a definite plus. Erebos 1 also prevents opponents from gaining any life, which is a nice bonus. We can also trade life for draw with Necropotence. We're not really drawing cards, but the cards go to our hand at the end of the turn. You just have to be careful when you're discarding cards for abilities because with Necropotence on the battlefield, those cards get exiled instead. We can also get cards into our hand during our upkeep too with Herald's Horn and Phyrexian Arena. The horn isn't really a draw effect, but if we reveal a vat, we can put it into our hand and then get our draw for the turn. So we're technically getting two cards before our main phase if the condition is met. Icon of Ancestry does something similar, but we can do it at instant speed at any time. We have to bottom deck whatever we don't reveal, but if we really need a rat, then it's a great way to dig through the deck. As a bonus, it gives our rats plus one plus one. However, if we really need a rat, then Rat Catcher does just that. At the beginning of our upkeep, we can tutor for any rat and put it into our hand. Keep in mind that if Conspiracy is on the battlefield, we'd be able to tutor for any creature in our deck, regardless if its actual creature type is a rat or not. Bypassing drawing altogether is Bolus's Citadel. Instead of drawing cards, we can just cast them off the top of our library by paying the casting cost with our life. Speaking of paying life for costs, Kyrix Son of Yawgmoth converts all normal black mana symbols into Phyrexian mana symbols. Remember that we do gain a lot of life with Ayara and Whip of Erebos. We also gain life with other cards, but we'll see them as we go along. The deck does have ways of generating tons of mana, but being able to cast things once you're tapped out is great too. Crypt Gas and Nirkana Revenant helps our swamps produce even more mana. Crypt Gas can also gain us life thanks to its extort ability, which is even more valuable. Nirkana Revenant has a built-in mana sink which is great if we're able to get through and smack an opponent with a huge beater. Thanks to being a mono-colored deck, we can get a ton of mana off of Nyx, Lotus, and Nyctos Shrine to Nyx. The devotion to black is going to be really high so these permanents can give us a ton of black mana. We can also get a ton of black mana due to all the basic swamps the deck is running. So Mangus of the Coffers, Cabal Coffers, and Cabal Stronghold are able to tap down for a ton of mana. 
Although Cabal's stronghold is only limited to basic swamps, Magus of the Coffers and the Coffers themselves only care about swamps per se. For that reason, Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth is also included, since this will make all of our lands and opponents' lands into swamps. Ancient Tomb and Temple of the False God are also included as ways to get 2 mana from a single land and aren't in bad to include in a monocolored deck. Continuing to take advantage of being mono black, Jet Medallion and Bonto's Monument are included in order to decrease the casting cost of black spells. The monument only reduces the cost of black creature spells, but whenever we do cast any creature, regardless of color, we drain the table for one life, which is great synergy in the deck. Not mana rocks per se, these are still better than them because they're essentially giving a generic mana for each black spell we cast. As for mana rocks, Soul Ring, Mox Opal, Mox Diamond, and Mox Amber are included. These cheap mana rocks are included as a way to diversify the mana outage to artifacts as well as creatures and lands. We can also produce mana synergistically thanks to sacrificing creatures to either Phyrexian Altar or Ashnet's Altar. If we create a ton of rat tokens, then we can sacrifice them to these altars to get even more mana and getting death triggers in the process as well. And why do we want so much mana? For our other win cons. Exsanguinate is a great way to kill off the table. At least, if we're not able to kill off the entire table, we'll be able to gain a huge amount of life from it. We can also sink mana into Crypt Rats. Although we're only limited to black mana, we deal X damage to all creatures and players. If we have more life than the table and enough black mana, we can just bite the bullet and eliminate all players. Or at the very least, wipe the board. Speaking of which, the deck's running Damnation, Mutilate, and Dead of Winter. Damnation straight up wipes the board, but Mutilate and Dead of Winter can bypass Indestructible. Each of these depend on the number of swamps we control, but Dead of Winter relies on our permanence being snow. This is why the 30 basic swamps in the deck are snow-covered swamps. Living Death also has the potential of wiping the board including indestructible creatures while also reanimating every graveyard. Keep in mind that this can help opponents as well, so use it when conditions are ideal. We can also just wipe opponents' boards with Kindred Dominance. Unless we're facing other rat tribal decks, chances are that most to all creatures controlled by opponents are going to be destroyed. Fortunately, if we have Conspiracy out, all of our creatures are saved, not just our rats. If we do need to recover creatures after these wraths, the decks running Patriarch's Bidding, Volrath's Stronghold, and the previously mentioned Whip of Erebos. Patriarch's Bidding can return all of our wraths to the battlefield, which obviously combos greatly with Conspiracy. Volrath's Stronghold replaces one of our draws with a creature from our graveyard, but this is a great way to recur creatures being sacrificed, especially those few creatures in the deck with Enter the Battlefield abilities. One of those being Grey Merchant of Asphodel, yet another potential win con in the deck. Being able to constantly recur Gary is another way to significantly hurt opponents as well as gaining us a ton of life. We can also recur the previously mentioned rats that have opponents discard cards to really keep them without hands. This brew is just an idea of how to build around Maronar. It might not be a full-blown rat tribal deck, but it does contain and produce enough rats to almost be one. But the main theme is definitely sacrificing your own creatures for value. It just so happens that the creatures mainly being sacrificed are rats. As is, this deck is a lot of fun to pilot and play. If you're interested in the decklist of this spicy brew of mine, you can find a link to it down in the description. I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons of the brewers for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG Player affiliate link. That also helps out the channel. And to everyone, thanks for watching this episode of the brewery on the Commander Tavern. I am the Method Kirby, and happy brewing and happy Lunar New Year.